Uh, Jonathan, how would you go about monetizing these two? You'd sit down with them, and what would you say? Well, I'd first of all begin by saying, to a certain extent, they're all already monetized. The Duchess of Sussex is one of the most famous people in the world. So the planning is going to be how to deal with the incoming inquiries to a large extent, because the phone's going to be off the hook. Never before has a royal princess been available to the world. Absolutely, she's not allowed to use the HRH title. However, the rest of the world will still use it. Her, her mother-in-law will still be, well, her father-in-law will still be the future king of England, and her grandmother-in-law is the current queen of England. So never before has someone that close to the queen been available for commercial opportunity. OK, let's, let, let's say there would be one big interview that would go all around the world. And let's say, for instance, that it was conducted by somebody who was at their wedding, Oprah Winfrey, uh, for, for instance. Um, let, let's call it a, a two-hour special uh, sit-down with the, the Duke and Duchess of Sussex. How much would Oprah Winfrey or her organisation pay for something like that? My guess is around $25 million. What? Twenty-five million. Imagine how many people are going to watch that. Imagine the number of subscribers. Let's say it goes out on Apple or Amazon. The number of people that subscribe, new subscribers to Amazon, Apple to get hold of that interview. Mm. Imagine the advertising around it. I mean, the commercial opportunity around the interview, as opposed to just the kudos of the broadcaster having it, is extraordinary. Right. I mean, if you look at, for example. The Obama's book deal in America is around $50 million. Yes. And that gives you an indication that when you get to that level of global fame, the extraordinary money that will come in. Yeah, OK, so that's one. OK, there's the big interview. You've, you've knocked that off. You've taken your 20%. Uh, so that's 25 million. So they get 20, take away a bit of tax. They're already well ahead of the game. When it comes to merchandising, they've, 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 um, they've copyrighted Sussex Royal. Let me say that, you know, if, if you know, clothing, let's say uh, Prince Harry underpants. Is this uh, a road that they could go down? Clothing? Well, it's a, road, it's, a, it's a road they could go down, but I doubt that uh, Prince Harry underpants are going to sell. But what I do think um, <laughs> would sell would be, if you're talking about Prince Harry, if, for example, one of the big suit brands was to use... A prince, oh, he's not Prince Harry anymore, he's the Duke of Sussex. If they were to use the Duke of Sussex in advertising for smart suits, imagine how interesting that would be as a commercial proposition. But I think the real value when it comes to fashion is, of course, Meghan, because she's gorgeous, she's a global icon, she's been on the front cover of Vogue in the UK already, she's, she's been on the front cover of glossy magazines all over the world. So imagine her fronting Burberry, yes. um, Armani, you name it, any any brand in the world if they had her in those clothes in a global advertising campaign it would be phenomenal in terms of what it would mean to her income okay so there's uh, uh, you know we've got uh, things sorted out so far that we've worked together jonathan i assume i'll get my cut will be the uh, the oprah show and then there's uh, perhaps some wellness that we could do as well as the uh, clothing brand and what what else going going forward how else well, are we well, well you mentioned the wellness i mean there's a tv actress in america who's who perhaps might suggest is the same level of Megan when it comes to um, acting, called Jessica Alba. And she has a company called The Honest Company that's worth over a billion dollars. So imagine if, if, if Megan was to launch an, a company selling um, organic products, environmental-friendly products, just how big that could be around the world. Um, imagine the companies coming to Megan to say, will you become a director of our company and, and give, we'll give you shares in return. And if she increased the value of the shares, I estimate a billion dollar brand, she could in theory make billions of dollars if she got involved with, with the right companies in terms of being a shareholder. Look at the public paid appearances. You know, she'd go on a speaking engagements around the world. She could sell out Wembley Arena. She could sell out Madison Square Garden. She could sell out the Sydney Opera House. People would queue up to come and see her speak. She could write a book of her life. Imagine how popular and how number one all over the world that book would be. It's quite extraordinary. And they that must be—they must be very careful. Even available. And they must be very careful of their associations now, mustn't they? And, and presumably, they'll need a team of people vetting every uh, possible association they have and digging diligently uh, in, into the history of, of each of these people to make sure that their image is not sullied. Because image, as you know, Jonathan Shallot, is everything. But you're absolutely correct, and it's 
important, they say no as much as yes. In fact, probably no to most people that call them because if, for example, you know, a dodgy um, Russian tycoon gets in contact to fund his company and he turns out to have a history of raising his income by questionable means, that could equally destroy their brand. So they'll be very, very careful, I'm sure. I'm sure they'll do a fantastic amount of due diligence. I'd be very surprised if they made mistakes in terms of who they got associated with. I also think in the UK, it's going to be a very different perception than the rest of the world. In the UK, the UK press will continue to look at the negatives on her, will continue to find fault with what she does. But in America, she'll, she'll be a superstar who people will love. And in many parts of the world, she's already a superstar people love. So I think what we read about her in the UK press, we shouldn't take as a global view. Do you think that she had something like this planned for quite some time? Um, I wouldn't say she necessarily had a plan from the beginning. Listen, none of us know. This is all speculation now. Sure. This goes into the realms of all the opinion writers saying she's been planned this before she even married um, Prince Harry. My wife, for one, believes that. But I would hope that she married Prince Harry for love. You know, I, I'm, perhaps I'm old-fashioned in that sense, because I, I knew you got married for love, Andrew. So I'd hope that she married Prince Harry for love. I would hope that... Yes, this has come about, this has come, but this has come about more recently when the marriage, when, when her relationship with, in the UK hasn't worked and she's felt the need to leave the UK. But as to whether she had this planned or not is, is completely speculation. Indeed.